So good morning. This Bhagavatam class will be in English. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Narayanam Namaskritya. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Jeeva Narottamam. Naram Jeeva Narottamam. Devim Saraswati Vyasam. Devim Saraswati Vyasam. Padujaya Mudirayet. Padujaya Mudirayet. Nashtakraya Shabhatreshu. Nashtakraya Shabhatreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Rupavati Naishtiki Bhakti Rupavati Naishtiki So we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 5, entitled Narada Muni Cursed by Pratapati Daksha. And today there are many verses it has no purpose, <clears throat> so I'm um, reading them through 32 to 34, and then we concentrate on 35, which has a purpose. Etava utva prayayo narado mokhadarsana te pichan padamam margam pratrinam eva marisa it's a text 32. Translation. Shukadev Goswami continued, O best of the advanced Aryans, after saying this uh, much uh, to the sons of Prajapati Daksha, Narada Muni, whose merciful glance never goes in vain, left as he had planned. <clears throat> the sons of Daksha followed their elder brothers. Not attempting to produce children, they engaged themselves in Krishna consciousness. Text 33. Satrichinam pratichinam parasyanu patankata natyakite nivartante paschima yaminir iva. Translation. The Savalashvas took the, to the correct path which is obtainable by a mode of uh, life meant to achieve devotional service or the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, like knights that have gone to the West. Uh, they have not returned even until now. Etasminkala <clears throat> utpata bahum pasyam prachapati Purvavam Narada Kritam Putranasam Upashrinat. Translation At this time, Prajapati Daksha observed many inauspicious signs, and he heard from various sources that his second group of sons, the Savalashas, have had followed the path of their elder brothers in accordance with the instructions of Narada. And then we read together text 35. Chukrodha Narada Yasau. Chukrodha Narada Yasau. Chukrodha Narada Yasau. Chukrodha Narada Yasau. Putra Shoka Vimurchitaha. Putra Shoka Vimurchitaha. Putra Shoka Vimurchitaha. Putra Shoka Vimurchitaha. Devarsim Opalap Yaha. Devarsim Opalap Yaha. Devarsim Opalap Yaha. Devarsim Opalap Yaha. Rosa the Vip. This Purita Dharaha. Roshad Vis Purita Dharaha. Roshad Vis Purita Dharaha. Roshad Vis Purita Dharaha. 
Chukrodha, Chukrodha became very angry. Became very angry. Naradaya, Naradaya, at the great sage Narada Muni, at the great sage Narada Muni. Asa, Asa, that one, Daksha, that one, Daksha. Putra Shoka, Putra Shoka. Due to lamentation for the loss of his children, almost fainting, almost fainting. Devarshim, Devarshim, the great sage Devarshimarada, Upalabhya, Upalabhya, Sin, Sin, Aha, Aha, he said. He said, Roshat, Roshat, out of great anger, out of great anger, this Purita, this Purita, trembling, trembling, Adharaha, Adharaha, who slips, who slips, translation and purport by his divine grace, is a Bhaktivedanta Swami Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki. When he heard that Savalashvas had also left this world to engage in devotional service, Daksha was angry at Narada and he almost faded due to lamentation. When Daksha met Narada, Daksha's lips began trembling in anger and he spoke as follows. <clears throat> Shila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakura comments that Narada Muni had delivered the entire family of Swayambhuva Manu, beginning with Priyavrata and Uttanapada. He had delivered Uttanapada's son Dhruva and had even delivered Prachina Bahi, who was engaged in fruitive activities. Nevertheless, he could not deliver Prajapati Daksha. Prajapati Daksha saw Narada before him because Narada had personally come to deliver him. Narada Muni took the opportunity to approach Prajapati Daksha in his bereavement because the time of bereavement is a suitable time for appreciating Bhakti Yoga. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 7.16, four kinds of men, Artha, one who is distressed, Arthati, one who is uh, one in need of money, Jigyasu, one who is inquisitive, and Gyani, a person in knowledge, to try to understand devotional service. <clears throat> Prachapari Daksha was in great distress because of the loss of his sons, and therefore Narada took the opportunity to instruct him regarding liberation from material bondage. <clears throat> Chukrodha Narayada Sam Naradaya Sau Putra Shoka Vimurchita Devarsim Upalabhya Rosa Pispurita Dara. When he heard that the Savalashvas had also left this world to engage in devotion or service, Daksa was angry at Narada and he almost fainted due to lamentation. 
When Daksha met Narada, Daksha's lips began, began trembling in anger and he spoke as follows. So I beg the blessings of all the assembled bystanders and seniors, both here in the temple room and in the internet world, so I could speak from Srimad Bhagavatam, both for the beneficiary and basic rates, especially for my own purification. So now this situation is going to uh, give the peak point. Uh, Narada Muni has uh, um, completed his preaching to the Shavalasvas and uh, then uh, like it is said that even the moment's association with the great sadhu, pure devotee, uh, may change one's life completely, make it auspicious. Uh, so Narada Muni was uh, spending some time with the Savalashas and instructed them with transcendental knowledge and uh, culminating in devotional service. So then, <clears throat> Savalash was being very intelligent young boys. So they started to follow the footsteps of their elder brothers. And uh, that's a, um, <clears throat> a bit here, hilarious description here like knights that have gone to the West. They have not returned even until now. So they are gone forever, going home back to Godhead. And uh, this is Sukadev Goswami who is speaking. Uh, Sukadev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit. And this uh, kind of reflects the whole mood of Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, that uh, like in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it, it is said that uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is, uh, uh, is rejecting all kinds of materially motivated religious uh, ideas and therefore uh, uh, even up to the point of uh, having family in this material world and having children and that uh, uh, sweet association with a partner and uh, sweet voice and cute faces and of the kids, they are considered a, a bit of an obstacle for a spirit soul to make progress. <clears throat> mm. So this uh, <clears throat> occasion is um, driving the same idea. And uh, then Daksha got the news um, from various sources that uh, his sons also are gone forever. <clears throat> and he saw, even saw some inauspicious signs. Well, uh, kind of wondering, well, for material enjoyment, expanding the family tradi tradition in that context, they are inauspicious signs. But uh, there, are, there were also inauspicious signs uh, uh, when Krishna left the world, there started to appear some different inauspicious signs <clears throat> so those in, uh, showing of inauspicious signs seem to uh, be dividing in uh, various categories. Uh, but anyway, it's something that brings harm. <clears throat> uh, 
even though uh, Daksha should have been uh, uh, very grateful uh, uh, for uh, his sons getting liberated, therefore that made uh, Daksha like a perfect father, mm. as uh, Lord Harishapa said. Harishapa says that uh, one should not become a mother or father or a versatile demigod or any kind of superior if he cannot deliver his dependence from the material existence. <clears throat> but uh, Daksha was of a different category. He had, uh, well, he had a desire, motivation for his actions, and uh, then, uh, then he also. Uh, he felt that his mission was very important to populate the material world. <clears throat> uh, and therefore, he had an attachment. And from Bhagavad Gita, we learn that where attachment leaves, uh, leads. Yayato Vishayam Pumsa Sangaste Supachayate Sangachayate Kama Kama Kroda Pichayate Kroda Pavati Sambunha Sambunha Priti Viprama Priti Vamsat Puri Naso Puti Naso Pranashyati The one who is uh, attached to the objects of sense gratification, the you know, one is uh, Looking at them, then the desire attachment develops. Uh, unfulfilled attachment uh, brings anger. Anger bewilders memory. When memory is lost, then intelligence is lost, and uh, therefore one uh, falls uh, deep again, deep again in the material ocean. <coughs> Uh, so even like in the purport, it is said that Narada Muni, he has uh, uh, he has gone to deliver all kinds of um, personalities in the past, Priyavrata, Uttanapada, and Uttanapada's son, especially Ruva Maharaj, <clears throat> and even Prachina Barhi. Uh, um, I don't remember exactly the uh, story of Priyavrata. I uh, was he was he somebody who actually wanted to make advancement, spiritual advancement, very strictly, and he didn't want to take any position. Any uh, was he the one? Any position? Not getting married, and he was very spiritually aware. But then some superiors like uh, Manu and Brahma came, came by and they, <clears throat> because they needed somebody uh, to direct uh, good society, so they approached Priyavrata and, uh, and uh, they kind of offered or instructed him about the uh, uh, about taking a position, but nevertheless, Priyavrata was a great personality. <clears throat> and then Uttanapada, uh, he was the um, uh, father of Dhruva Maharaj, and also uh, he had another son from another wife, Sun Suniti and Suruchi. Suruchi is uh, like a ruchi means taste. So he had a taste for suruti and su niti. Niti means for like negation, not, not this. So he, he uh, suniti wasn't Uttanapada's favorite wife, and suniti was the mother of Truva Maharaj. So, <clears throat> so then Truva uh, Maharaj, as a five-year-old kid, tried to. And climb on the lap of his father Uttanapada, but then Suruji came and said that you are not qualified to do this. You have to take a birth from my womb, then you can take 
<clears throat> then you can play with your father like this. And uh, heartbreaking for a little boy. And then uh, Guru Maharaj got so angry and he left the place and went to tell his mother. And the mother was his uh, Vatma Pradamsika Guru. And he, she instructed Ruva to go to the forest to, uh, to find the Supreme Lord, that actually there's a, somebody who is still a Supreme. Uh, so you don't need to really worry about your relationship with the Father. And then Ruva Maharaj left the palace and went to the forest and uh, started performing austerities. And Narada Muni came again. So he <clears throat> saw Dhruva Maharaj and uh, he was actually t telling Dhruva uh, that you're such a young boy trying to discourage him, discourage him that uh, you go and play and uh, those who come here to perform austerities in the forest, uh, they are like elderly people. You go and live your life and come a little later. He, he was actually testing Ruva Maharaj, but Ruva Maharaj's anger and desire was so great that he couldn't. <clears throat> and that's what uh, Ruva says that he's very determined, uh, uh, very determined to uh, uh, perform his own. Uh, uh, own uh, mission, own task, and therefore, <clears throat> uh, so he he had a desire to get a, a kingdom greater than his grandfather, Lord Brahma, and then he finally got what he wanted. But at the time when, when he got what he wanted, he didn't desire it anymore. He was lamenting. Why did I have material motivations? Because what I got is much more valuable uh, attachment to the Supreme Lord. Mm. That's always something to think about. But then he had, he got the planet Ruvaloka. Uh, what is it called in English? Pohyantati. Uh, Pole star. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> and that's, uh, that's above Lord Brahma's uh, residence. <coughs> mm. uh, then even Prachina uh, Barhi, he was very attached to perform sacrifices for uh, uh, for sense enjoyment. Uh, so he is some, somewhat <clears throat> compared to Prasapati Daksha. But uh, <clears throat> Pratsinaparhi, uh, Narada, uh, Narada Muni could turn his head uh, by giving the example of uh, King Puranjan, who had a wife and uh, Actually, King Puranjan story refer is like a analogical story, allegorical story of uh, uh, of practically us um, turning from materialist uh, to a spiritualist. And uh, sometimes I heard, like a late Pankajani Prabhu once said that uh, the story of King Puranjan is like a hammering story. We hammer the <clears throat> hammer away our material consciousness and uh, like a really forcefully twist it. You need to understand this: <clears throat> the material world doesn't work for a spirit soul. <clears throat> uh, why would you waste time in the material existence? Uh, so even though Prachapati, uh, I mean uh, Prachina Barhi was a materialist, and Narada Muni could turn his head, but Narada Muni could not turn Daksha's head. Uh, 
and we can see we can see it from here even though Daksha at this point had had the experience of uh, uh, insulting uh, Lord Shiva and therefore he got a reaction for it um, goat's head and then he gave up his life like that and then this is a, <clears throat> a second appearance of Daksha where he needs to populate the world mm. <clears throat> so um, like um, Daksha was very much lamenting about here and seeing these inauspicious signs and uh, hearing about his second group of sons leaving him forever for some kind of spiritual perfection and not and not performing his desire to populate the universe <clears throat> and so uh, here this scrap he was so much lamenting about that about it that he almost fainted and uh, so he was very uh, morose about this incident so therefore it, Narada Muni took an opportunity to go to Daksha uh, <clears throat> probably Narada Muni would have understood that uh, uh, Daksha wasn't very pleased that uh, he made all of his sons to uh, practically pure devotees and uh, leave their father's um, association and uh, leave their uh, mission given by their father. No. <clears throat> but still Narada Muni took this opportunity of Daksha lamenting to go to Daksha and uh, try to uh, uh, give him salvation also or to, to deliver Prachapati Daksha but uh, Prachapati Daksha like uh, Bhagavad Gita says that uh, uh, it's uh, lust only which is the great sinful enemy of, uh, of a conditioned soul to keep us here in the material world and there are different degrees of this lust like uh, <coughs> Uh, small co uh, fire covered by smoke, mirror covered by the dust, and uh, embryo covered by the womb. So, <clears throat> so em embryo covered by the uh, womb is the uh, strongest covering of this lust. Uh, <clears throat> and so obviously, Daksha was in a a uh, high level of uh, coverage by uh, lusty desire therefore he was uh, as unsatisfied lust ends up it end up, ends up in anger so his uh, lips were trembling he was so angry at Naranamuni <clears throat> and uh, now he begins to speak we can Hear from the next verse what the Ratsapa Dilaksha is saying. <clears throat> so they are. Uh, This uh, Daksha's trembling of his uh, lips uh, that reminded me of, of uh, well, uh, Daksha was uh, uh, angry because his own motivation didn't come through. But uh, there was an occasion where Prabhupada's lips were also trembling. He was really very angry uh, because some of his devotees had started. Uh, a group which is which was called they called the Gopi Bhava Club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they are, uh, they refer to because uh, uh, there have been so many descriptions in the uh, scriptures like uh, 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 Rasadans of the Gopis with Krishna and uh, uh, about Chaitanya's mood, uh, in, in, in especially 
when he was absorbed in Krishna's pastimes in a trance. <clears throat> so uh, they wanted to uh, enthusiastically emphasize these kind of uh, uh, points of view to the Shastra. And uh, the Prabhupada, when he heard about this, he called these devotees in his room and he was really angry. Yeah. And therefore, his lips were trembling also. Uh, so therefore, Prabhupada always uh, warns us, and uh, sometimes he says that uh, uh, because in India there's a, a tradition to have a Bhagavad Sapta reading Srimad Bhagavatam for seven days. Like uh, it, it sounds attractive, like uh, Prabhupada uh, Maharaj was hearing Srimad Bhagavatam for seven days before he left his body. So this kind of tradition is seemingly followed in India, but Prabhupada criticized it because the speakers of Bhagavatam, they are speaking to earn money and then they uh, cheaply please the audience by very quickly jumping into the most confidential part, uh, the Rasalila parts of Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, in that sense, kind of, uh, I'm not sure if Prabhupada actually forbids the devotees to give these Bhagavad Sattas. But uh, uh, anyway, there is an opportunity sometimes in India, in, uh, in our Rathyatra festival somewhere, uh, there are some devotees who are having this Bhagavad Sattva, uh, especially uh, in such places as uh, where they are following Puri Rathayatra schedule, like there is an eight day period between the uh, beginning of Rathayatra and the end of Rathayatra, the return of Rathayatra. So they take the opportunity to have Bhagavad Sattah in between, they make some bundle somewhere <clears throat> where, the, where the Rathayatra cards are temporarily uh, kept and they have a festival and in that sense it, it sounds nice because uh, yeah, it's called devotees, they are speaking Bhagavad Sattah more like a, uh, on a safe side, let's say like that. They <clears throat> uh, start from the beginning and they emphasize uh, spiritual practices and uh, uh, like <clears throat> whatever is healthy for our development of Krishna consciousness. But the anger you can use uh, uh, also for spirituality, for uh, for Krishna's sake, and in, and in this way, Prabhupada was using anger for a right purpose. Uh, <clears throat> like it is said about Prabhupada that uh, when he was dealing with his disciples, and he was very displeased with one one disciple. Uh, so he used his anger mode to this disciple. And uh, in the same room where there was another disciple with whom he was very pleased. So then after that he turned to this other devotee and his mood totally changed. He was able to give up his anger like in an instant and speak very encouragingly to this other devotee. But if we get angry, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter who we see, we are angry to everybody uh, because we are angry, our, our anger, anger is the, like the main point there. <clears throat> um, and that's actually not you know, the real purpose of using anger in Christmas service, but uh, it's about our conditioning to be angry at somebody. And then there, there was this, uh, because Daksha was very much lamenting 
on, on that con context, Narada Muni was uh, approaching Daksa in order to try to deliver him. So Prabhupada <clears throat> brings out the uh, four kinds of personalities who approach Krishna, those who suffer, Artha, and Artharthi, those who are in the need of money, Jikyasu, one who is inquisitive, and Kyani, the person in knowledge, uh, or desiring for knowledge. Uh, so any one of these, they can uh, become, uh, uh, they become, can, uh, they can become uh, uh, to the level uh, of uh, <clears throat> uh, like a studying devotional service and uh, understanding the science of Krishna and uh, make uh, their human life perfect. But it always doesn't happen like that. Well, f first of all, um, if you uh, look at uh, religious institutions, there are many times there are lots of people, when you look at them, you can notice that uh, uh, actually they probably didn't do so well in the material world. That's why they come to <laughs> a religious institution. Uh, uh, so it's a uh, but what it's good for everybody, even, even these persons, we can try to develop our skills in devotional service, and that's <clears throat> that's all auspicious. <clears throat> um, So uh, even Narada Muni himself seemingly, seemingly was in this situation. I mean, uh, he was a servant of uh, uh, of uh, visiting Sadhus Pakti Vedantas, and he was uh, offering them food which uh, his mother had cooked, and he was able to take the remnants of the food and. Uh, hearing their discussions, and therefore <clears throat> uh, he got spiritually enlightened. And then by the will of Providence, Bhaktivedantas uh, left the place, and then his mother died because of a snake bite, and he was seemingly alone. Yeah, so he was seemingly like a, in a distressed condition. Young boy lost his mother, and he's just alone. <clears throat> Uh, but, uh, I don't remember uh, any description that Narada Muni was actually distressed at that point. But uh, because due to his association with the Bhaktivedantas, he he was uh, uh, he knew what to do uh, to go and seek for the Supreme Lord, <clears throat> and that, that's what he did, and then he. Uh, started walking towards the north, and then the Lord appeared to him. And it was a very pleasant uh, encounter. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so in this kind of uh, distress situation, we can feel that it's more easy to preach. Uh, <clears throat> For example, there was a war in Yugoslavia. Uh, one time, Yugoslavia fell different seven different countries. Ultimately, uh, so there are descriptions how uh, how it was very easy to preach to the distressed people, and they <coughs> some devotees met some soldiers, and they were very easily buying Bhagavad Gita's and. Prasada went like, oh. Indra Swami was, was describing the situation. And that's what we are trying to do in Ukraine right now also. Uh, so then, uh, 
Mm. But then there are also, uh, like a, I heard one occasion, uh, one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples, uh, uh, when he moved to the temple and after some time, uh, he actually, his, some, some of his relatives, uh, uh, one of his relatives uh, left the world, died, and left a uh, good inheritance for this devotee. And uh, <clears throat> some way, the devotees in the temple, they saw one box there, and uh, there was a big bag, and books, and uh, devotee clothes, and all kinds of devotee paraphernalia, and then the letter that, uh, I don't need this anymore, and I'm going. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, so that was kind of material motivation. Uh, so uh, he was definitely maybe in the need of money, and when he got what he desired due to the devotional service, so he then he left. But uh, <coughs> uh, Obviously, the teachings of Narada Muni, like in this case, didn't uh, go into him very much. <clears throat> but uh, we try to follow Narada Muni's instructions. And uh, and also, like Narada Muni is a traveling spaceman, transcendental spaceman, and uh, singing the glories of the Lord. So we also try to do this wherever we go. And chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Either in form of book distribution, Hare Nam, or Prasada distribution, also it's all auspicious. We can uh, follow Narada Muni's footsteps like this. Hare Krishna, again in here. Thank you for giving me attention if there are any questions or comments i can try to thank you Prabhu. why it was so dangerous about this copy club it's kind of they were not like engaging in the illicit sex or something but why it's it's kind of so dangerous that Prabhupada immediately stopped it so what is the and this song the harm you said that's kind of what what is the danger of that uh, <clears throat> so what is the danger in the Kopi Club or Bhagavad Sattaha? Uh, <clears throat> why Prabhupada so eagerly stopped it? Well, uh, like Bhaktivinoda Thakura has pointed out, uh, 13 Apasampradayas who had a very uh, like a perverted idea about the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, uh, like uh, one of the groups is uh, like a sahajas, taking uh, spiritual life very cheaply, uh, or that kind of mood, <clears throat> because there is actually kind of a great danger of uh, not fully understanding the spiritual aspect of uh, association between Krishna and the gopis. And so we very easily think about it as a mundane mundane affair between boys and girls. Uh, <clears throat> but it has uh, Krishna, um, Krishna's association with the gopis has nothing to do with that. Uh, so just uh, being very careful, being very cautious of this, uh, uh, that uh, the misunderstanding doesn't happen. So, uh, therefore, uh, therefore, Prabhupada rejected it. What can happen? What can happen for the. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe at some point. Uh, because of the influence of not being very well educated. Yeah, even great sages, when they are uh, performing austerities, they sometimes fall. 
or to speak of some new devotees in a, some movement. Uh, yeah, it's very, uh, very easy to fall. Like, uh, there was a poster one, one time of even Prabhupada himself. Uh, anyway, was it a poster or just a statement somewhere? And <clears throat> even Prabhupada himself prayed that uh, he wouldn't fall in Maya. Yeah, so it's um, very risky um, to involve oneself with uh, 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 trying to understand the relationship between, between Krishna and the gopis. <laughs> The danger is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, and then what to speak of uh, the devotees not being mature enough spiritually. Uh, if they spread this kind of thing to people in general, yeah, definitely uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, definitely makes a dangerous position for them. For them. Like, uh, some people will get the idea of taking it very cheaply. Just like the Sahajas do. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we can get into those sections, we may not always think about how spiritual it is. Uh, we may not always remember that if one copy would appear here in the material world in, in this uh, in this context, what would it what would uh, a copy be? Like a uh, Rupa Manjari is Rupa Goswami. They would be renunciants of this world. Uh, and totally absorbed in their uh, relationship with Krishna. So therefore, approaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, like a safe, uh, safe approach uh, to uh, uh, to the mood of Krishna. Trying to understand the mood of Sri Makaradarani, therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears. <clears throat> so there's a, just a danger of falling down and making an like inauspicious environment in the, with the people in general. <clears throat> Anything else? The devotee is practicing ten, fifteen, twenty years. Why, after so long time, do they left society? Why do you this leave society after practicing fifteen, twenty years? Well, Kind of obviously, uh, that Krishna consciousness has turned like a <clears throat> material to these devotees, and they are not, they have seen the material aspect of Krishna consciousness for so many years, so they need some kind of change, and this may happen because of uh, not taking properly. <clears throat> the Krishna conscious practices, like maybe uh, offensive or inattentive chanting, <clears throat> that's what we usually offer in these cases. Uh, or maybe they make some uh, offenses towards the other devotees, seeing the other devotees <clears throat> uh, according to their material conditioning, and then that, that is not. Uh, matching with the, your own material conditioning then and then they uh, see some conflict there and maybe start making offenses 
and then offenses to other devotees will be put water on the fire of your Krishna consciousness. Um, and you start seeing everything materially, and if it, if that's not uh, pleasing to you, then you easily seek so seek for something else which is more pleasant. Therefore, we try to carefully guard against the ten offenses of against the chanting of the holy names. Even the first one is the blasphemy of the devotees, so I dedicated the last propagation of the holy names of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a uh, time will show uh, uh, how devotees are doing in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody may be very enthusiastic in the beginning, but after some time, you know, even the prasadam is not so tasty always. And, uh, so. Uh, to keep that respect there. Yeah. Sometimes it is described that Krishna consciousness is like walking on the razor's edge. So, could be careful. Yeah, can I have, can I ask one question? There is like, in that context, there is, Narada Muni is talking about deep renunciation to the uh, sons of Prasapati uh, Daksha, but in the seventh canto there, in the one purport, there is like uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira is talking with Narada Muni about his Krihasta Asham, and he is thinking that he don't have any hope to attain the topmost goal of life, but here Narada Muni says that uh, the, with the association of devotees and singing of Hare Krishna mantra, everyone can attain the highest perfection. So, mm -hmm. so what is the right and what is the wrong? <clears throat> yeah, well, there's. A <clears throat> Uh, this concept of uh, being Kriyasta and being a Kriyameri. Uh, Kriyameri's attention is in his own sense enjoyment, expanding the family uh, or extended sense enjoyment, sense gratification, whereas Kriyasta's uh, central attention is uh, to please the Supreme Lord. So, uh, but Prajapati Daksha, <clears throat> he was uh, uh, definitely, he had a strong selfish motivation for enjoyment. So that kind of <clears throat> association is not very good for spiritual life. But Maharaj Yudhisthira, uh, he was a great devotee of the Lord. Uh, he was always uh, scaling and uh, comparing everything through the to the shastras. What is uh, uh, what is right uh, for spiritual life and what is not? <clears throat> so he was very careful. So therefore, uh, Yudhisthira's position is a little bit different than Daksha's. But even Yudhisthira made one mistake one time. Uh, Krishna asked him to buy that the Ashwatthama is dead in order to uh, get Ashwatthama's father through uh, Dronacharya. Uh, uh, 
to make him give up his fighting due to lamentation. So <clears throat> uh, Yudhisthira didn't lie, and uh, he was not following order of uh, instruction of Krishna. Therefore, uh, that was actually not following the paradharma. He was following uh, uh, that is more of a mundane dharma than paradharma. And therefore, uh, like his chariot was, uh, when he was uh, riding on the chariot, his chariot was floating above the surface of the earth. But at that time, it hit the ground because he didn't follow paradharma. Yeah. And uh, he had to even see hell for that, <coughs> for that mistake, not following Krishna's orders. <coughs> Uh, but otherwise, Yudhisthira and Daksha may belong to a different category. No, no mm. Well, if you are Krishna consciousness and if you are very Krishna conscious and you have still have family, that family is affected by your Krishna consciousness, and that's like a uh, renunciation in in that sense also uh, you understand what is what the family life uh, you just dedicate everything to Krishna and that's it like a Bhaktivino Thakura was a householder but still he got entitled to the seventh Goswami mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. To improper performing Krishna consciousness mm. and offenses. Okay, about, about offenses is something hurt. And uh, how to know if I proper performing Krishna consciousness? <clears throat> how do I recognize uh, how to? Uh, if, I, if I'm making, doing offenses, and how do I recognize that I'm properly <clears throat> executing Krishna consciousness? Well, proper execution of Krishna consciousness makes you happy. <laughs> and uh, improper makes you unhappy. Mm -hmm. And it's simple. You can also check if it's according to Guru Sadhu, Guru Sadhu and Sastra, what you are doing, how you are doing. <clears throat> uh, because uh, eternal, blissful, knowledgeable, spiritual cannot be happy in the material world, which is, which is temporary, full of ignorance and full of misery. So if if this unhappiness is there, then that means that, that you are doing something wrong, you are, and there's a lack of Krishna consciousness in your life. Uh, Krishna consciousness is a life of spiritual bliss, like a um, Brahma Buddha Prasanna Mahana Suchatina Kamsati Samasarve Subhute Sumatim Vatateva, you know this verse, right? survive <laughs> this time. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when distress comes, <clears throat> maybe you can think that this is just uh, some energy that is actually separate from you, separate from your soul, soul's blissful nature. Uh, okay, you see it for some times, but it's also just Krishna's energy, and Krishna is blissful, and suffering can 
and me to this school in New Zealand. So uh, sometimes I uh, really hit my toe hard against some uh, table foot, and it, it's painful. <laughs> I really so what to do. Uh, time to cry for Krishna at this point. <laughs> If you cannot cry for Krishna, cry that you are not crying for Krishna. If you cannot cry that you are crying, not crying for Krishna, then try that you are not crying that you are not crying for Krishna. And the Pujato Goswami once told this recursion. Uh, so he went for some time. Uh, so. Uh, oh yeah, also uh, Gaur Govinda Swami, he mentioned that uh, Krishna consciousness is uh, like a crying school. <laughs> we learn to cry for Krishna. When we are chanting, we should cry like a baby uh, who has lost his mother. All right.